everybody. Welcome back for episode three of Power Tech with your SEs. I'm your host, Justin McKean, and today I'm lucky to have Solution Strategy Director Danny Cohn joining us. And we're going to be talking about information security threats and how to best manage them. This is a challenge that all districts experience, and you can just take a couple of seconds, Google security threats for schools, and it'll be alarming how many schools are going to show up on your thread and they're battling with specific things, you know, all different areas where they're being attacked and it's concerning, right? Managing student data, we're, they're all juveniles. So we have to take this thing at the most, you know, emphasis that we possibly can. It's got to be at the top of our priority list. So what we're going to do with Danny is just talk about his experience and I'll let him introduce himself after I kick over the first question and you're gonna be able to hear from a true expert on how we are doing this at PowerSchool. But what I love about this show is really that candid feedback. Danny gets to be Danny, let you know what he thinks, how he feels. And if he had to put that director of technology hat on, this is what he would be concerned about. Absolutely. <clears throat> so the first question, Danny, is what are the top information security threats that schools are facing today? And what are the goals of those information security threats? What are they trying to do to the schools? All right, well, before I dive into that, let me just give you a quick little background on myself. So yes, I am a solution strategy director with PowerSchool, as Justin said. Um, I have worked with numerous K-12 districts varying in size. I've worked in the private sector. I've worked in the government sector. And you know, honestly, I, I've dealt with cybersecurity attacks from both a protection and mitigation standpoint as well as from a recovery process. And I know firsthand how destructive these information security threats can be. So with that, going back to your question, Justin, yes, there are a range of threats out there today, but some of the more dominant attacks include phishing attacks, ransomware attacks, and denial of service attacks. So basically a phishing attack uses disguised email as a weapon of choice, right? The user gets the email, they believe the email is legitimate, and they click on the links or open up attachments from the email. And what happens when they do this is basically it downloads malicious software on their computer or it tricks the user into providing their credentials, resulting in a compromise credentials. Um, ransomware, whack, ransomware attacks they exploit the network file shares across systems to spread the virus, which then encrypts files and holds them for ransom. Ransomware attacks are big business for cyber criminals today. And the reason for this is because ransomware is relatively cheap and easy to use, and it's highly effective in forcing their victims to pay. Ransomware, unfortunately, is likely to be a significant long-term project for districts. A denial of service or DOS attack is basically a flooding of malicious network traffic to make a website inaccessible to legitimate users. A DOS attack can come from inside the network by having a user accidentally download software, which then executes the DOS attack, or from outside the network where an attacker hits the website directly. When multiple systems attack the same website simultaneously, it's referred to as a distributed denial of service attack or DDoS attack. And finally, while not a real cybersecurity attack, physical security should be enforced in your defense. Um, the reason for this is because it provides protection for your systems against unauthorized physical access, protection from theft, natural disaster, as well as accidental damage. As I mentioned before, you know, there's a range of these threats out there, but they all have the same common goals, Justin, and that is to disrupt school operations, harm or take advantage of students, teachers, and staffs, and disable, compromise, and or redirect school technology assets all of which, which can wreak havoc with district IT staff and the technical environment. Oh, absolutely. And the number one, you know, Danny listed a whole bunch of those. The one that kind of stood out to me was the phishing attacks. You know, even at Power School, when yeah. I'm looking through my email, I see those filtering through. We're fortunate enough that we've gone through some training. I will admit firsthand, Justin McKean may have clicked one of those. And when <laughs> I opened the email, I quickly realized I emailed our staff and we were good but I, I, I got tricked to Danny's point. It literally looked like an in-house an in -house email. Sure. When I clicked on it, I quickly, when I saw the details of the email, realized it was not. But you know, luckily I didn't download anything. I didn't click the links. So yeah. it didn't really affect anything. But yeah, Justin McKean almost potentially. The, the disguises <laughs> that they come in are real. I mean, the, yeah. including the graphics. I mean, I've seen a ton of them come in from like Facebook and you'd swear you're getting an email notification directly from Facebook but it's not, you just gotta be careful with it. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Justin McKean almost crashed power school. It didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen. So kind of following along those lines though, we've done some training at power school to help us prepare. What should school districts do proactively to ensure that their security frameworks are up to date and that they can address all these rising information security threats? Okay, so there's a couple things. The first thing I would highly recommend is that the district implements security awareness training program to cover the basics on these common threats, such as social networking, malware, and phishing. Uh, you know, having a security awareness pr training program provides an effective human firewall by keeping security fresh in the minds of your staff, students, to greatly reduce the chance of having a security incident. If your district cannot afford to use a third party security awareness training provider, then create your own. It's super cost effective and it's a great investment. The next thing is put in place an incident response plan. It's not a question of if a breach will happen, but when it will happen and you really need to be prepared. Having an incident response plan creates resilience against cybersecurity threats and enables a rapid response to remove the threat and resume operations. And once you have your incident response plan in place, practice and test the plan so you are ready should an incident occur. And finally, conduct some ongoing security audits, right? To educate your district stakeholders on training needs and the resiliency of your IT environment. A security audit is gonna provide you with a holistic view of your current processes, procedures, and infrastructure. A security audit can be performed internally by the district, through a third party, or you know, even partner with your neighboring districts to audit each other. All of these are some simple recommendations that districts can take to easily update their existing security framework and help protect the district assets against any kind of information security threats. No, those are all great points. I love that. I love that last one where, you know, partnering up with a neighboring district, you know, when I think of that myself, you know, we all know our environments. So if you're testing yourself, you might, you know, you kind of always know your weaknesses where they are. Let, let a friend go through it. And the benefit of that is that not only are you going to get that outside opinion, but then you're also going to give the outside opinion back. It's a true teamwork experience. I think Absolutely. that's a great idea. Dan. Absolutely. So the next question I have is, you know, are there any new technologies out there to help protect and mitigate against these information security threats? Hmm. Yes, there are areas where technology upgrades can definitely help reduce the risk of information security threats. Um, for starters, you know, traditional firewalls, they're great for port forwarding and VPN connectivity, but alone, they're just not enough. You need to upgrade to next generation firewalls that go beyond port and protocol inspection and provides for application level inspection to detect and block malware and other threats. Uh, another thing is, um, you know, consider a denial of service or DOS protection on your perimeter edge network. This way, if you are impacted by a denial of the service attack, you can mitigate that malicious network traffic to eliminate downtime for your users. There are cost effective denial of service solutions to choose from, including internal network appliances, as well as cloud based services. I would also consider replacing legacy antivirus with next generation antivirus. Legacy antivirus, it provided adequate protection in the past, but it relies on a set of known threats using the vendor's signatures or DAT file that must continuously be downloaded and updated on the endpoint device. Next generation antivirus goes beyond traditional antivirus by using machine learning and artificial intelligence to detect and prevent both known and unknown malware on endpoints. And last, I would recommend implementing a security information and event management or SIM solution to identify security threats and provide automatic um, email alert notifications so that you can respond quickly and mitigate the threat. These are just some of the key areas where I feel technology upgrades can really help protect, protect the district. No, and I think, you know, you bring up the idea of the cloud component, right? If I'm a district out there that's hosting my own servers and hosting my own applications, you know, really this sticks with you all specifically, right? Having it in the cloud will provide some advanced security, but there are concerns. So, Danny, I'm just thinking about that and, and you know, how many districts are on-prem, maybe battling. Some folks want to go in the cloud, but there, there are scenarios. So, like, well, let's just play hypothetical, right? Let's just pretend that I'm a CTO. Um, I have self hosted applications on site. But to your point, my software is a little bit out there. My hardware is a little outdated. There might be some things that need to upgrade. So because I'm receiving some pressure from other folks, the district, I'm considering cloud computing. But my number one concern is that I lose control of my data security. You know, 
although you've listed all these things, they do scare me, but at least I'm in control, right? Relinquishing the control is a concern. So my options are two. I can upgrade my existing hardware and keep doing and going down that path, which of course is gonna be very expensive, or I can move my applications to the cloud. So with all your experience, what would you advise me as your good buddy on what I should do? Sure, I mean, I mean, personally, as a CTO or an IT director, I would strongly recommend cloud computing for my applications and systems that are currently self-hosted because of all the key benefits that cloud computing offers, right? I mean, first off, from a security perspective, all the major cloud computing providers, such as Microsoft Azure, AWS, and Rackspace adhere to a variety of IT security and privacy standards, including FERPA, HIPAA, SOC 1, SOC 2, SOC 3, and many others. They also provide a cost-effective approach to implementing advanced cybersecurity, such as next-generation firewall and denial-of-service technologies to protect your server systems and backups. It also allows you to isolate your servers from the public internet, as well as internal district threats that attack the local network shares, such as ransomware. Um, from a high availability perspective, all major cloud computing providers incorporate multiple redundancy levels across server systems, storage, network, power, cooling, and internet connectivity. Mm -hmm. Cloud computing also offers an advantage to scalability and productivity by allowing service systems to easily be created within minutes without needing any kind of budget approvals for capital expenditure costs. And finally, from a disaster recovery perspective, all major cloud computing providers utilize multiple availability zones or data center facilities where you can replicate your data for redundancy of recovery options. Look, Justin, in the past, IT folks always needed physical access to their servers to perform certain tasks, such as restoring data from tapes or performing software upgrades from DVDs, but that's not the case with technology today. Cloud infrastructure services or infrastructure as a service provides IT departments with a secure cloud infrastructure of storage, networking and servers that they can purchase on demand or as needed instead of having to buy hardware outright. Now, if districts wanna take advantage of cloud computing for their applications, but don't have technical skills in house to manage the cloud infrastructure or just no longer wanna manage their application updates, then they should consider software as a service or SaaS. So basically SaaS provides the cloud-based delivery of your applications through your web browser. And it greatly reduces the amount of time that district staff must spend managing and updating the application software itself. All of PowerSchool platforms are offered today in this type of software as a service or SaaS model, which helps districts to reduce risk, increase security and lower your total cost of ownership. So in my opinion, Justin, these are all the, the key features and benefits of moving to cloud computing. Right. And with our applications, you know, just so everyone's on the call that's listening, you know, it's not just about using our service either, you know, no. Daniel, like what, I'm, are there other, some others that, that you would recommend even just outside our network? Yeah. I mean, like I said before, I mean, you know, districts can go to cloud computing on your own, their own using Microsoft Azure or Amazon web services and even Rackspace. There are a lot of providers out there today. Right. Absolutely. And so, you know, when we talk about everything we've hit on today, you know, the number one, focus of the call was talking about information security threats, how we can manage them. And, you know, the cloud is an option to do that. If you have everything on prem, it just falls on you, the IT director or CTO, whatever your specific role or title is. And as a solution engineer, someone who's out across the country demoing our applications, th this is always a hot topic. So if you're sitting there and you're, totally. you're not alone, you are not alone. It's something that everyone feels the heat and pressure on. And I hope that the information today really just provided you some big picture ideas from, from a true expert, understanding again, from his perspective. And just so you understand a little more of Danny's role, this is what his role is. He consults with districts that are looking at our applications and talks about the options. You know, it's always up to you what direction you wanna go. And what we do is we lay it all out on the table and you get to decide and grab what cup you wanna drink from. So Absolutely. again, I wanna thank Danny so much for joining us. It's a lot of fun for me as a former teacher, as you guys know, this is a little over my head. So having Danny in our corner to help us out with this information always, always helps us provide the best options for our clients. So again, thank you all for joining us on Power Tech with your SEs, where you get that candid, open, honest feedback from the people who know PowerSchool best, your solution engineers. So until next time with episode four, we'll see you later. All right. Thank you, Justin. Thank you.